Hi, Brene Royal here again. I am the vineyard manager for Monteroso, and today I'm excited to talk to you guys about pruning in our 127 year old Zinfandel. Right now we are in block E25, and the core team is taking over pruning this 127 year old Zinfandel. So, first things first, 127 year old vines crazy stuff. This was established originally back in 1886, but after Phylloxera came back through and wiped most of the industry out, the vineyard was replanted on a St. George rootstock and was planted in nine, or 1893, excuse me. So this is 127 years old. There are various replants that we'll see throughout the block, but this has lived longer than most people have. So, um, very fun stuff. We've got 45 acres of 127 year old Zinfandel. So, one of the bigger properties that has um, vines that are over 100 years old. Maintaining these isn't easy. And out of all of the farming practices, I believe that pruning tends to be the most important because you really are setting the stage. You're making bigger, the biggest cuts you're probably going to make all year. And that's going to have kind of a domino effect as to how this vine continues to progress throughout the year. Uh, majority of these vines are dry farmed, so um, there is no added irrigation, although you will see an irrigation line in here and that's for the replants. But back to pruning, we <laughs> call these our gnarly vines. And you can see they're truly gnarly. Um, if you look close up, they're gnarly because they've been pruned on the same side every year. So even if it wasn't the most ideal spur position to leave, you didn't want to interrupt the, the sap flow and, and all of the nutrient flow to the growing points. So it's really cool to even just see how the pruning has stayed consistent. But with that year to year, you can see it kind of curves around and it always gets a little bit longer. So from the base of the vine, the trunk here, things can get a little bit off balance and tend to fall one way or the other. Present day, if you're planting head train vines, you tend to go after a little bit more of a goblet style that opens up in the middle and reduces the variability with fruit stacking on top of each other, airflow, light flow, that kind of thing. But it's it's hard to do when, when this has been kind of the, the way it's been done for over a hundred years. Um, as we try to rebalance these vines, you'll see we've tried to leave different renewal positions from the last year. So we'll leave different suckers that are in ideal spots to try and get them to lignify to become a position that we'll prune off of in the next year. This isn't super pr or, um, ideal, but that's kind of giving you an idea. Like this would be something if it was in an ideal spot that we'd leave, prune off of, and then establish it as a position to hopefully get rid of some of these higher ones that are getting away from us or some of, some of these that are tucked in the middle here. In our Zinfandel here at Monteroso, a cluster can be about a pound a piece. And if you've got two canes coming off of this, so one cane would come off here, one off the other, and then two clusters per shoot, you've got four pounds that can be hanging off of any of these. And when you think about how fragile these vines are, if you start getting you know, eight pounds over here off of these two positions, you can threaten the integrity of the vine and, and have it break off of it, the weight of its of itself. And then two, some of the canes can get out to eight to 10 feet, be encroached in the rows. So when foot traffic comes through or any kind of tractor activity, it can catch the vine and break as well. So these vines are very tedious and very hard to kind of curate so that you're you're maintaining a balanced fruit load and you're not overcropping it, but you're also setting it up for success so that it doesn't break on itself. As you can see here too, originally when these vines were put in, they were put in on wooden stakes. So I am not saying that this stake is 127 years old, but that was just kind of the way of doing it. And one of the bigger efforts that my team and I have made throughout the seasons is to get some metal stakes in here just to maintain the structure of the vine and keep it supported. You'll also see we'll come through and tie different arms up to keep them from falling off themselves or breaking off of the base. So a lot of time goes into not just supporting the vines, but thinking about how is this vine going to grow? How is that fruit gonna be set up? 
Um, on these spur positions, we like to leave two buds. Sometimes you'll see a third, but for the most part, this Zinfandel does really well with, with just the two buds left. Otherwise, you'll start overcropping and over, trying to overproduce these vines will just kill it, um, which is not ideal. So right now we'll catch up to the core team and, and see it real life, see it happening.